Hi, I would like to demonstrate to you the AVM mode of Bella Vista. It's the adaptive ventilation mode. As you know, most modes, you have to adjust tidal volume, you have to adjust I to E ratio, the rate and everything. In Bella Vista AVM mode, this is different. You choose the patient's height. For instance, 175 male, you select OK. And this defines the patient's requirement for ventilation in liters per minute. In this case, seven liters per minute. So, like that, we start the ventilation. Starting ventilation, the mode first has to evaluate the lung of the patient. It does that with delivering three uh, test breaths. After the three test breaths, the biomechanics of the lung is known, and the, the mode will start to adjust. So there is a default inspiratory pressure of 15 millibar, default rate of eight, um, tidal volume results in around 600 milliliters per minute and now the mode has, to st has started to regulate. It is reducing tidal volume, it is increasing rate until it arrives at the set minute volume of 7 liters per minute. Completely automatic. It adjusts the rate, it adjusts IE ratio, everything on the lung mechanics of the patient. We can have another look at this as well. It's called the AVM graphic. What we see here is on the horizontal, we see the rate. And on the vertical, we see the tidal volume. And this line here is the minute volume of seven liters per minute we have just set. So seven liters per minute can be achieved with a very low rate or a high tidal volume or a high rate and a low tidal volume. However, for this patient, there is a safe, a safe zone which is inside this rectangle and there is a working point, an ideal rate and an ideal tidal volume. And after about one minute, the adaptive ventilation mode has now re uh, reached the working point. Let's go back and have a look at these parameters. Ideal rate for this patient is 16. Ideal tidal volume is around 450 milliliters. I to E is about one to one. Now let's assume this is a COPD patient. COPD patients require more time for exhalation. Let's see what happens. I increase the resistance of the test lung. You can also see that here on the flow pattern. The flow pattern, we can see that it requires, will require more time for exhalation. So let's have a look what I to E ratio is going to do shortly from now. So I to E ratio starts to increase, giving more time for exhalation. Tidal volume has to increase, of course, to deliver the same minute volume. So let's have a look at the AVM graphic again. It's working its way up on the tidal volume and down on the rate. So the rate will be reduced, more time for expiration and an increased tidal volume. So it's still regulating. I to E has, re has reached one to three now. It might even go further. Rate will come down. It's coming down. It's going to, to 13 and maybe further down. And like that, AVM is completely automatically adapting to the patient's lung mechanics. Now it has reached the uh, regulating, the maximum regulation the P limit, so I increase the P limit a little bit in order to give it full freedom of regulation. Let's have a look. Now we can really reach the working point of, of, for this kind of patient. If for whatever uh, reason the resistance goes away again, AVM very quickly will reduce the pressure so now we see the final ventilation status for a COPD patient. We see a quite high tidal volume, a slow rate, and an I to E ratio, which is in favor of expiration. On the way back, I'm reducing, 
So I'm reducing again the resistance and let's see how AVM reacts to that. It will immediately drop inspiratory pressure, drop tidal volume and go back with the I to E ratio. So we have seen how AVM re automatically regulates um, the ventilation. Now it can also deal with a spontaneously breathing patient. AVM follows the patient all the way from intubation to extubation. So whereas in a conventional world you need um, pressure controlled or volume controlled ventilation, then you would need SIMV and then you would need CPAP, AVM goes all the way through with the patient. Okay, so it's regulating its way down with some alarming after such an extreme change of adjustments. Okay, this is the patient again back to normal. Now let me show you what happens if the patient needs to, be, to do more weaning. To do that, I would reduce the minute volume, the default minute volume, to, for instance, 5.6 liters per minute. To make the patient more hungry, he will, his, his CO2 will increase and he will have to breathe more. So let's have a look at what happens now in the uh, AVM graphic. So the patient wants to start to breathe spontaneous. He wants to add some ventilation. And he can do that by increasing his frequency. He can do that by increasing his tidal volume. And that will add minute volume. So we can motivate him to start breathing spontaneous. If the patient is doing better and better, we can reduce even more maybe to 70, and a patient will be more motivated to breathe himself until he is ready to be extubated. We can see how the inspiratory pressure is going down. To nine millibar, to seven millibar. And this is how the AVM works in the weaning situation. If the patient gets tachypneic, which means if he's breathing faster and faster, it could be an indication that he's starved, that, he need, that we need to support him some more. And that's when we would go back a step or two steps, so he will be ventilated a little more, assisted a little more. If the patient has an apnea, AVM will kick in again with mandatory ventilation and support the patient through the phase of apnea. This is how the doctor sets the strategy for ventilation, but he has not to care anymore about detailed fiddling in tidal volume, about detailed I to E ratio, about detailed rate settings. He can set the main strategy and AVM takes over the rest. This is what we call adaptive <coughs> ventilation mode, AVM in Bella Vista. Thank you very much.